So I know Brian's not presenting this, but I want to at least acknowledge him for putting together a great program. But I want to um, welcome his fellow, his resident, to talk about, um, I lost my place. So mesh fixation with <laughs> barbed anchor suture. Dr. Lyons, right? Yes. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank Sages and its board members for allowing us to uh, present our research. Um, my name is Calvin Lyons, um, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the Methodist Institute for Technology, Innovation, and Education in Houston, Texas. I'll be discussing uh, mesh fixation with a barbed anchor suture, which results in significantly less strangulation of the abdominal wall tissue. These are our authors. Disclosures, uh, Covidian provided all the suture for this research project, but the research design and implementation were done independently. So each year in the, in the United States, we perform approximately 90,000 venture hernia repairs. Over the past 10 or 15 years, uh, lap laparoscopic repair has become a well-established procedure for the treatment of venture hernias. It has several advantages over the normal or the standard open repair. Namely, it has lower rates of recurrence as well as wound infections and shorter hospital stays. One disadvantage of laparoscopic repair is chronic pain. Um, and this pain is thought to be due to uh, mesh fixation. Currently, there are three main mesh fixation methods used clinically. Uh, sutures used alone, or transfascial sutures used alone, laparoscopic tacks used alone, or a combination of tacks and sutures. Unfortunately, within the literature, there is conflicting evidence regarding the rates of hernia recurrence, as well as incidents of postoperative pain between the different mesh fixation methods. Uh, for this reason, surgeon practice varies widely in the community and many surgeons will use a combination of both tacks and sutures. Um, regardless of the incidence of recurrence and uh, um, incidence of postoperative pain, the fact remains there needs to be a, a better mesh fixation method. Um, one potential solution to this problem is our novel barb suture. This suture is unique because it distributes tension across the barbs of the suture instead of at one single knot fixation point. It's also unique because it is able to grasp tissue without the need to tie knots. So based on this information, we formed the following hypothesis. The use of a barb suture for mesh fixation during hernia repair will cause less strangulation of tissue while providing adequate holding force. So in our study, we used multiple two by two centimeter pieces of polyester mesh, which we placed against the porcine abdominal wall in an underlay fashion. This mesh was fixated uh, either with our standard O polyglycanate suture or our barbed O polyglycanate suture. This image illustrates the configuration we used to, um, to fixate our standard, our standard suture. We placed a full thickness suture stitch at the porcine abdominal wall, and then we had an expert laparoscopic surgeon tie six square knots with the least amount of force possible, and that force was measured with the use of a tensiometer. We used a similar configuration for our barb suture. Again, a full thickness suture stitch to the abdominal wall, and <clears throat> we applied approximately 0.5 kilograms of force to cinch down this barb suture in place each time. After um, measuring the force for a fixation for the, for the mesh and the suture, we then placed a tensiometer through the mesh and we applied traction until the, the mesh tore and we recorded the mesh failure force with both our standard suture and our barb suture. Uh, finally, we put the tensiometer through the mesh, uh, sorry, through the, the suture itself and we applied traction until the suture was pulled through the abdominal wall and we measured the, the suture pullout force, again, for the standard suture and for the barb suture. And we, based on our experimentation, we obtained the following results. For the, the suture fixation force for the standard suture was significantly greater than for the barb suture, 2.17 to 0.59. Essentially, the fixation force for the standard suture uh, supplied 75% more strangulation force than the barb suture. Um, we also obtained the following results. The suture pullout force for the barb suture was much less than for the standard suture, approximately uh, half as much. Uh, yet the suture pullout force for the barb suture was always greater than the mesh failure force. Um, and as expected, the mesh failure force between uh, the, the suture, or the mesh that which was uh, fixated with the standard suture was about the same as the mesh failure force for the barb suture. So based on, on these results, we can make the following conclusions. Um, the, for the, with the barb suture, it applies approximately 75% less strangulation force across abdominal wall musculature uh, for fixation than the, than the standard suture. Um, also, the mesh tear-out force was always less 
than the barb suture pullout force for each and every trial. And for this reason, we feel that the barb suture will adequately hold the mesh in place beyond the mesh's tearing force. And we feel that it, when the barb suture is used clinically, uh, it may lead to uh, less postoperative pain. And we think this warrants a clinical trial. All right. Come right, go right ahead. The question I have is uh, number one, do you need to, did, were you knotting the barb suture? No, no, it, it's just suture that there. does not require a knot, and so you can pull it and cinch it down in place without tying a knot. And then the barbs are also then exposed to the intraperineal contents. Are you worried about that? No, um, actually, this barb suture has been used um, in, uh, clinically for repair of enterotomies. It's also been used by OBGYNs for uh, closure of uh, the vaginal cuff during transvaginal hysterectomies, and it's um, been used, I guess, extraperitoneally to close skin in plastic. So it's had a wide variety of use, and it's been used within abdominal cavity before. I show from Tacoma. I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I just want to make sure I have the materials that were used straight. This is an absorbable suture. Uh, Polyglycolic acid. Yes. Okay. And then the mesh is a was Pryatex. Poly polyester mesh. Okay. So, if you have a dissolving suture, at some point the suture is gone. And so the only fixation then that that hernia repair has is whatever ingrowth has happened between the parietex and the uh, surface of the uh, perineum, correct? Yes, that's correct. So I guess I'd be concerned about that. Is it possible or do you think, if you think that the um, degree of, of crimping down is causing chronic pain rather than actually capturing nerves in there or some combination of the two, uh, would it make sense to have a, uh, a barbed permanent suture as an option to do this instead? Because if the suture dissolves away at some point and you have you know, only perineal fixation, couldn't that mesh migrate down to the pelvis like we've seen happen in uh, other cases? Uh, it, that's, that's a possibility. Um, but I think in clinical practice, though, um, PD, uh, yes, polyglycanate suture has been used to, uh, to fixate mesh in place before. And uh, per looking through the literature, it has a reliable, um, um, I guess, um, use. In, in other words, mesh fixation has not been a significant problem in the past with a standard old polyglycanate suture. So I wouldn't expect it to be any worse for our barb suture. Calvin, is that your standard to, uh, to use a dissolvable suture for ventral hernia repair clinically? Uh, yes, our institution, it's, um, we use um, um, absorbable suture a lot. Thank you.